Today we, as a nation and other nations as well across the world, set aside a day as uh, we've recently done with our mothers to pay honor and tribute to our fathers. When we think of Daddy's hymns, that used to mean to me something that it means now. I remember when, I believe it was Holly Dunn, who came out with the song, I guess it was my high school years, I remember Daddy's hands working until they bled, how he sacrificed unselfishly just to keep us all fed. If I could do things over and live my life again, I'd never take for granted the love in Daddy's hands. Daddy's hands weren't always gentle, but there was always love in Daddy's hands. At that that time, that meant something to me in the sense of, as a son, it meant something to me about an appreciation for my father. My daddy's a masonry contractor, and so... I grew up knowing what hard work is. I grew up living on a farm and working in construction. Knowing what hard work is and knowing the the strength in his hands, those calloused hands, from years of concrete, 12 inch blood. And I thought that that's what daddy's hands were all about. Until the time that Stacy and I had our first son, and for the first time, I realized exactly what Daddy's hands are all about. And when Stacy asked me as as I held that little crying baby in my hands, in my arms, she asked me, she said, does anything about all of this surprise you? And I said, I never knew I could love anybody this much, this quick. And I said, you know, I always thought I knew how much my parents loved me. But I had no idea. And then came that second son, and it was all over again. A a, a new joy. And once more, a realization of just how deep the love of a parent is. Now, if you're not yet a parent, maybe still a child or a teenager, you don't understand what I'm talking about, but just believe me. When your parents say, I love you, it means something deeper, it means something greater, It has more significance than you can even imagine right now. And when they make those decisions that you're not happy with for your good, because it's not what you want, but they know, and really deep down inside, you know it's what's best for you. They're doing it out of love. We read uh, scripture from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, we read, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. A commandment with promise, a commandment with a blessing of honoring your father and your mother. And it is a commandment. And, and, and one thing that we need to realize is that when we honor the roles that God has put in place, and we honor God. When we honor the role of the eldership, and we honor God, when we dishonor that role, we dishonor God. When we honor the role of the parent, we honor God. When we dishonor that role, we dishonor God. And I suppose today across the nation that there are are, are many young people, maybe young and older, Uh, who are thinking, how can I show my love for my parents? How can I show honor today to to Daddy? 
And, and I would submit to you that there are nice, there are nice cards and there are nice gestures. There's always the phone call, the letter, the visit, the dinner, the, the card, whatever it may be. And those are nice gestures, but those really don't show honor. What does show honor is how we live our life. Especially if you're so blessed as to have Christian mother and father. And the greatest honor that you can give to that mother that father is to honor your father in heaven. And that's exactly what they have striven to show you and to teach you in your life. Verse 4 of our passage says from the New King James Version, You fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. But bring them up in the training, the admonition of the Lord. The King James Version there says, bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And then NASB here says, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And I like the way that that's translated, so I wanted to insert it here. Bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. You know, fathers, Christian fathers, have a huge responsibility. And um, as a matter of fact, just... A little while ago, a, a father, a Christian father and I were discussing how important the spiritual nourishment of the family is. It's really the most important thing. There are, there are wonderful things that we can do for our children, and you know, we like for them to have the best, and we want to be sure that they have it better than we did, and all of those things. But I tell you what, you, know, you, you, you can be sure that, that uh, your, your child gets a scholarship and that they go to the best college, and that they wear the best clothes, and that they hang out uh, with the right circle of friends, or what have you. But if all of that, if all of that focus, is that that becomes your focus, and if all of that is done, and, and they lose their soul, then, well, you know. And so, for those of us who have younger children right now, I'd, I'd just like for us to remind ourselves and be reminded from God's Word that we have a responsibility here as fathers especially. And, and fathers, God has placed us in a role here that is, that is so extremely important that we, we have this responsibility to bring up our children in the, in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. That is our primary purpose in our role as fathers. You know, Hannah, you know, when she prayed for Samuel, and she prayed for him, and, and, and she offered him back to the Lord. As part of her prayer, she said, if you just give me a sign, I'll give him back to you. I'll offer him back to you in your service. And I would submit to you that each of us, fathers and mothers, have, or at least ought to have, and I, and I believe most of us do have, although we may at times lose sight of it, that very same concept, Lord, you granted me with this heritage. You granted me with this wonderful blessing. You have placed into my stewardship this precious soul for the training, for the nurturing, for the discipline. I want to give him back to you. I want to give her back to you. And that's my purpose in life. You know, as, as, as a preacher, I've, I've had to remind myself and have been reminded by other preachers who are older, some who have, they said, you know, I, I spent so much time in church work and attending to people's spiritual needs, I neglected my family. I've asked the Lord to help me to never do that. Because no matter what good I may accomplish in the Lord's church, if I fail my two sons, then I have failed. And so we realize then that there is a, a huge responsibility. And you know what? The, the truth of the matter is, once you bring a, a child to adulthood, then that person is an adult and they will make their decisions. And you know what? They may choose to make decisions that hurt you as a parent. It doesn't mean you did a bad job. It doesn't mean you weren't the right kind of father, you weren't the right kind of mother. It means that they made decisions. And each of us have the capacity given by God to, to choose to receive him into our lives and to dedicate our life to him or to choose to do otherwise. He gave us that capacity because he loves us. And he wants us to love him back. And anything without a choice is not love. And so we all have choices to make. But I have seen it so many times that when parents have laid that foundation, when that foundation has been laid, that although, although 
their children, when they become adults, they may say, well, there's something else out here that I haven't experienced yet. And they may follow that path and that, that can be destructive. But so many times I've seen that years to come, and hopefully the parent gets to live long enough to see it, they come back to that foundation. They come back to that foundation. And that's why the Scripture tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That foundation to be laid, and then it is up to the child. Once we have brought them to the point that they are no longer under our stewardship to build on that foundation. The fathers do not provoke your children to anger. This is a compassion that understands. It is that that forgives, that hurts, that is expressed in many ways in our lives. And sometimes as, as fathers, we may, we may have such an intent focus on the success that we want our children to see that we forget, that we forget that they also need our understanding and our love and our compassion. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes just laying a set of rules and saying, you do it because I said so, that's just not good enough. I know some may disagree with me there, but, but, but please understand and what I'm saying is the motive. If the motive in a child doing right is that I've got to do right or else I'll be punished, then isn't that, isn't that far inferior to the motive that says I want to do right because I love God? Because I've seen that love of God displayed for me by daddy and by mama. And also an understanding that children will fall. And when they fall, we pick them up. Now, I, I'm, I'm right there with a lot of you fathers when it comes to being sure that my boys become men. I always say, I'm not raising boys, I'm training men. You know? I'm not raising boys, I'm training men. But then I, I've got to remember that they're boys. And um, Stacy had a lot to teach me along that line. Uh, because it used to be, you know, one of them would fall, skin or knee, and I said, get up. Come on. You're not hurt, get up. Be tough. You know what? I had to learn. They are boys. And they do need compassion. You know, we serve a father who is compassionate to us, a father who loves us so much. He understands when we fall. He doesn't like it. It hurts him. But he's there and he understands. He has that, that compassion. He has that mercy. He provides for us the things that we need. And as, as fathers here on this earth, we can look to our Heavenly Father as our role model. And, and say, okay, Father, how do you treat me when I fall? Well, I seek for you to come back to me, like that prodigal son in the parable that Jesus told. I seek for you to come back to me, and then I receive you with open arms. And that doesn't mean that the father condones the wrongdoing of his child. Of course not. That's not the, the, the training and the discipline and the teaching of the Lord. But it is that compassion. And so, thank you fathers, Christian fathers, for your hands of instruction. Thank you for your hands of compassion and those arms that give hugs and provide safety and security. Our hands of provision. We're told to bring them up in the nurture, bring them up in the training, the discipline, the instruction of the Lord. We have a role, a responsibility to provide for our children as the Lord said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, that that which would be provided would be by the sweat of your brow. And so fathers have that responsibility to work, to provide, and you know, it's, it's real easy for children older and younger to just take for granted that it's always there. And you know it's there because daddy went out and worked for it, maybe mama went out and worked for it. Mama, you know, we have magical drawers at our house. Did you know that? We have magical drawers that you, you take clothes out and you wear them, and you put them in a pile, and next day or a couple days later, they appear there clean and folded. And, uh, and it's, it's the most wonderful thing. Do you have drawers like that? <laughs> okay, ladies, don't throw anything at me. But you know what? See, see that's, and, and, hey, I'm, I'm guilty here. Um, 
this is this kind of, you know, we get used to having and we forget where it comes from. First of all, it comes from God, right? First of all, it comes from God. He blesses us and he blesses us richly. But, you know, if you have, if you have daddies that, that go out and work hard to provide, and don't take for granted the fact that you have shoes on your feet, that you have clothes to wear to school or to work or to worship. Thank you. And, and you know what? There's, uh, and and he's, he's probably going to be tough, you know, and, and look a little austere and say, well, you're welcome because he doesn't like to show emotions. And, but that, thank you, will mean more to him than all the cards and all the gifts that you can get. It's just a simple hug and a thank you. And we've already had our Mother's Day sermon, but the same goes for mothers as well. You know that. They are hands of compassion. They are hands of provision. Bring up these, they, oh, we have such a great responsibility, and it scares me to death. It scares me to death. I want to change the world. I want to change the world for my boys. I want the world to be a safe place, but you know what? I can't do that. And so you know what I can do? I can make a safe place at home. I can make sure that home is a safe environment. That, that home is a place where they don't, they don't experience anger at home. They don't experience tempers being lost. They don't, they don't experience words that they shouldn't hear or things that they shouldn't see. Home is the safe place that as a father, I can provide for my children. And I may not be able to do it anywhere else, but you better believe I'm going to do it at home. And I hope, fathers, that you treat your home like that. That is your fortress against the world. That is the one place. That is your sanctuary against, against all of the harshness that your family may feel out in the world. That is the one place where they ought to be safe. And if you have that at home, thank the one and the ones who've helped it to be that way. Because we all want our children to have it better. We all want our children to have it good. But we listen to the world, and the world says, here's what success is. Here's, here's how you show how good you have it. And it's not in clothes, and it's not, it's not in the cars that we drive, and it's not how nice our house is. It's all those things that, unfortunately, the world has lost sight of, and we can't as children of God, as we are raising our children give back to God in his service. The father's hands, daddy's hands, are hands of discipline. Bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. And that idea of their discipline is sometimes it's misunderstood. It's misunderstood in terms of church discipline. It's also misunderstood in terms of parental discipline. But the word here is, as we read in the New King James Version, training. It's, it's, it is, it's more than punishment. It's Church discipline and, and, and the, the discipline that a parent administers does not begin and end with punishment. Punishment, that, that uh, uh, part of it that is, is maybe a consequence of certain decisions that had to be made, that's, that is such a small part of what discipline is all about. Discipline begins with training. It begins with instruction. It begins with an example. It begins with providing the tools that are needed and then shaping and molding and guiding that vessel along the way. That's what discipline is all about. And it's so that idea of training up a child in the way it should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, verse 6. So then, why does a father discipline? Even whenever that discipline means punishment. Well, it's not because if he is a godly man, it is not because he enjoys it. If he is a godly man, it is not because he is frustrated by the day's activities at work and he's going to take it out on his children. But it's because he loves you. And because he's listened to God and he's following God's plan. And let me tell you something. I don't care what you are talking about, whether it be the work of the church, the family, culture, society, government, whatever, God's plan always works. 
And so in Proverbs chapter 23, verses 13 through 18. Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice. Indeed, I myself, yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord all the day. For surely there is a hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. Here's why. Here's why a godly man, a godly father, administers discipline to his child. There is a hereafter. Because more than anything else in the world, he wants to see your soul saved. He wants to spend an eternity with you in heaven. And the scriptures teach that that discipline will help to save a soul from hell. Now, the flip side of that, why do parents sometimes not discipline? And by this, I do mean administering punishment, that aspect of discipline. And I'm convinced Somebody may not like this. And I am convinced that the reason is selfishness. Because it hurts me to punish my child. I don't want to do that. And I sure don't want to have to suffer the possible rejection for the moment. And so I let it go. Now is that not selfish? It is the parent who loves, who disciplines. As a matter of fact, you turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 12, beginning with verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 12. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate, not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? God does this. God administers the very same model to us as children that he instructs us as fathers and did you catch that, fathers? Ultimately, it is not mama's job. Ultimately, it's ours. Mama can do it. But ultimately, it's our responsibility to see that our children receive the discipline that they need so that they may grow up straight and strong and learn those principles which will guide them in life, that they may be disciplined until they learn self-discipline. And we teach them self-discipline so that when they become adults, they live a disciplined life that will be productive and will be spiritual and will be good for them. Thank you, godly fathers, for your hands of discipline. A godly father has hands of devotion. This is the instruction of the Lord that we give. This is the training, the nurturing, the discipline of the Lord that we provide. And so remembering that helps us to keep things in perspective and to remember to keep things in focus as we raise our children. A godly father is the spiritual head of his house. He accepts that very heavy burden and shoulders it by Now, in our society that is inundated with feminism, that's not a very popular idea, but it is biblical. It is right. Once more, when we do things God's way, God's way always works. The breakdown of the home today 
to a large extent can be contributed to fathers who have not been the spiritual head of their house. And there are many other factors, many other reasons, but that's one. So thank you, godly fathers, who shoulder that very heavy burden of being the spiritual head of your house. One who looks to your heavenly Father for direction, for guidance, for instruction, for the provision of those things that you need as a father. And Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. I don't know about you, but as a father, I feel so insufficient. And God has given me these lives. He's given me these souls, along with Stacy, to, to, to train together and to raise and to provide back to Him, to offer them back to Him in their lives. And I am so insufficient to that task. That task is far bigger than me. And so, I need to be reminded to trust in the Lord, to look to Him, to follow His ways, to seek His instruction, to pray for His guidance and His wisdom. And in all of my ways, to acknowledge Him and have faith that He will direct my paths. Fathers, we need this. Mothers, we need this. But this, this scripture, we, we really need. As somebody says, you know, children don't come with an instruction manual. I beg to differ. They do. As a matter of fact, the instruction manual was provided for us before the children were. If we'll read it. If we, will, if we will seek for God's ways in our parenting, if we will seek for God's direction as fathers, as mothers, it's there. Does it answer every question? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. What, what do you mean? I mean, the principle is there. The answer is always there in the Word of God for every question in life. The principle is there to guide us to make the right decisions. And God is always there to guide us as we seek to serve in accordance with His will. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Well, those eyes are always watching, aren't they? Hmm. Now, sometimes I'm reminded of mistakes I've made in a very powerful way when I see my sons might emulate them. It makes me want to be sure that the path that they are walking as they follow in my footsteps is a straight path, is a right path. Path that I know, that, that, I, can, that I can say, I can, I can honestly say, son, look at me. Follow me, and I will lead you to God. Fathers and mothers, you need to be able to say that. Follow me, and I will lead you to God. Because if we don't, who will? Is it easy? No. You know as well as I do that we compete with a world that allures them with all kinds of false promises and entrapments and allurements. And yet through it all, we've got to lead them to God every decision that we make. And oh, it's easy. It's easy to excuse why we make decisions that we make. But we've got to remember something. 
whether it be our own children or other people's children or other adults, somebody's watching and somebody's following, and we better be leading them to God. What do we teach our children is important in life. When the question comes up of some social activity or worship to God, what is important? And it doesn't matter what we say, what we do provides the answer. The devotion that we give before our children. We can say and we can talk and we can say, don't do this, don't do as I do, do as I say. And children see right through it. And you know what? You know what the result of the don't do as I do, do as I say mentality is when it comes to doing things that are wrong? You know what we're teaching them? We're teaching them to do as we do and tell their children, don't do as I do, do as I say. That's what we're teaching them. And so it's up to us, men, to be men of God. And I, I, I'm calling, God is calling on you and me to be men of God. We need men of God today in the world. We need men of God today. In the Lord's church, we need men of God today in our families. Sons need to be able to look at daddy and know what a godly man looks like. And daughters need to be able to look at daddy and know what to look for in a husband. So thank you to the godly fathers who have hands of devotion and raise their children with such. And so once more, we see the passage before us. Children, you've been looking for a good Father's Day gift? Here it is. Honor your father and your mother. As a matter of fact, I might, I might submit, at least for me personally, I think it's probably the case for most godly men, honoring your mother probably the greatest gift you could give us. Loving and respecting your mother, the light of our lives. But it's nice to get that honor and respect too. And thank you to our teenagers and our younger ones and our older ones who are reflecting in your life the principles that you've been taught and are headed down the right path and showing honor to your parents by doing just that. But more importantly, more importantly, showing honor to your heavenly Father. On this Father's Day, let's not forget, this is Sunday, and yes, it's Father's Day, but ultimately, it is our heavenly Father's Day. And so what's your relationship with your father? What's it like? Uh, your, your heavenly father. Are you honoring him in your life? Today, today, Father's Day, let's take a look at ourselves and our relationship with God. And see if we are giving back to him that devotion, that honor. He so deserves it. Our actions will speak louder than our words. And if we can pray with you, for you, please come and let us do that. If we can help you to grow closer to God, we want to do that. If you're not a child of God this morning, you can call him Father, but only if you will come to him as his child. And in order to do that, you need to make a decision today. You've got to make a decision. Do I continue to live for the world, for myself, for the devil? Or do I give myself to God and truly let him become my father, my spiritual father, as I receive his inheritance, his spiritual family? You do that by repenting of sin, confessing Jesus as the Son of God, being buried with him in the waters of baptism for the remission of your sins, rising then to walk a life of honor with him while we stand in sin.
never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flood in my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I is mine in the bright sunlight ever rejoicing pressing my way to mansions above singing his praises gladly I'm walking walking in sunlight sunlight of love Jesus is mine. Please be seated. Song before the Lord's Supper will be He Loves Me, 217, verses 1 and 3.